right, so for those of you that followed along in our previous tutorial, this is the curtain that we created. We just added a subsurface modifier to it. So if we remove that, you can see this is how it looks. Uh, if I push play, no, that's not what I want. But if I run the simulation again, pushing Alt A, you'll see that uh, that is what our curtain basically came down to. So what we're going to do now, and let me just enable screen cross keys so that you can see which buttons I'm pushing. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more detail. So essentially, I want to add a wall into the side here because you can see that the curtain pushes off to the side and we want it to be a little bit more natural as if something is blocking its way. I also want it to kind of drag on the ground so that we can get a little bit more of a, a, a natural look of that. And then another thing is I might want to add one or two boxes just so that um, if you recall the Mirror's Edge video that I was looking at, there was like a shoebox lying there. And I want to do something kind of like that, just to kind of give an idea that something was like thrown into the corner. And uh, there we go. It's like disrupted the curtain as they were closing it. So um, let's just uh, first start with the basic walls that I'm going to set up. So uh, we're going to set this back to zero. And then I'm going to hit shift A and I'm just going to add, okay, there we go, a cube and holding control. I'm just going to drag it off to the side. I'm going to go into the wireframe mode or edit mode and then just move it up. And then there basically we have our wall. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the floor, but I'm just going to hit shift D to duplicate this one, move it down. Hit R to rotate by 90 degrees and then move it and maybe just scale it a little bit more. And then one thing that I'm going to do is if you notice my pivot point is like uh, all over the place. And the reason for that is that I still have it set here to um, 3D cursor. And the reason I actually do that is, well, let's just um show you here i'm going to hit shift s and set cursor to select it and that's my pivot point because what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hit s to scale on the z axis and holding control i'm just going to scale once then you'll see it scales from the top to the bottom and now you'll see that our curtain kind of like goes into the floor but this causes a little bit of a problem and i noticed this before if you run the simulation which we can quickly do um, okay, I haven't actually added, let's just add collision detection for these. So I'm just going to select this one, go over to the physics tab and just click collision. And then the same with this one, click collision. But now if I start again, this is what I want to show my curtain animation. You'll see that it does something a little bit weird because the curtain is stuck in the collision body there at the bottom. Um, so it's kind of like just dragging it out. So in order for us to fix that, we're going to actually do a little bit of animation for this. So um, as you can recall that we did add uh, keyframes for the shape keys. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to set this to one and then I'm going to select the curtain model and I'm going to here at the bottom, just make sure you have location, rotation and scale selected and I'm going to hit the keyframe. Actually, it should actually be all the way over here. So let's move it first over here. And now let's add a keyframe. And then we can move it. Let's move our time frame pretty much to the same way the shape key meets up. And let's just hope that the animation doesn't mess up with this. As soon as I move it, it actually corrects everything. There we go. So I'm just going to move my timeline to about 120 and then holding control. I'm going to move this all the way against the wall and then add a, another keyframe. There we go. So now actually, if we move it through, you'll see that that's what happens. So let's try this simulation quickly. Does kind of move a little bit fast. But that is what we were going for. Now you can see that the curtain does actually lie on the ground over there. 
And if anything, if we want to see a little bit more, because the curtain is still moving afterwards, we can increase our um, timeline to let's double it and then go from there and see how long the simulation actually lasts when the curtains settle properly. But as you can see, we already have a lot more detail here. So now there's two other things that we can do. The first thing is I'm going to add a box. So I'm just going to hit Shift C to center my view. I'm going to add a normal cube and I'm going to scale it down to the desired size that I want. Okay. And let's scale it on the X axis to make it a little bit wider. And then I'm just generally going to scale it smaller. There we go. Maybe one unit larger on the, there we go. So now we have our box. And I'm also just going to add collision for this box. And I'm going to move it off to the side. Now there's two things that we can do. We can start an animation with this box as well. As you can recall, when we look at our curtain and we kind of like push it all the way over there when it meets up with the area and we can like kiss, uh, sorry, uh, we can like select a point, let's say over there where this box is going to start moving towards the curtain over there and then eventually push into it. Or we can just put the box in the way from the very beginning. So. Let's uh, try the box. I'm just going to go into top view and just move the box to roughly over there. And we can also rotate it and then just do something like that. And start the simulation. And as you can see, we kind of have like the desired effect. But just for um, the sake of teaching, um, I'm going to rotate this back to the way it was. I'm going to put it over there. I'm going to add a keyframe for it at point one, and then I'm going to point, let's say we go to point 120, add another keyframe for the box, and then I'm going to suddenly move the box I've, as um, here's another tip when you move your timeline let's say i move it to the timeline over there or let's say i move my box exactly to where i want it to be and then i move the timeline as soon as you do that the box will jump back to its previous keyframe so first move your timeline and let's say i think i have to set to 30 frames per second yes i do so let's say that essentially we want the box to be there within a second so we're going to do from 120 all the way to 150. That's pretty much a second. And then I'm just going to, and let's also rotate it and then just push it in and then add the keyframe. Okay. So now let's run the physics simulation and see how that turns out. See, that gives it a little bit more of a natural look as if the box was thrown into the corner afterwards. And um, you can always then also export this box to Unreal Engine 4 as a, um, a shoebox that you want to use inside of your um, game or your level itself. Okay, so that's pretty much everything done. Uh, what I'm quickly going to do is I'm just going to export this to Unreal. So I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to select both the box and the curtain and i'm just doing this as a test because the curtain it's got uv maps but the box does not so i'm just going to hit file export fbx and we had the curtain default here before so i'm just going to select it and call this uh, um, curtain box okay keep on missing the oh test.fbx and down here at the bottom, I'm going to go selected objects. And I'm going to hit export. All right. Well, I noticed that I did a mistake before. So um, here at the bottom, 
we're just going to export the mesh and we're not going to export any of the animations or it's just going to be the geometry and let's change this to edge detect and let's try that again there we go and let's actually just make sure that I had both selected again because with us using keyframe animation the physics it will not um, have exported as animation because we were using FBX if you use the uh, Alembic exported it will actually export the animation but because we were using keyframe animation it actually would have exported those as well so that is something that I was just trying to avoid there because I'm not too sure if it would have crashed Unreal or anything like that. So just always remember that if you're just going to use this as a solid model, do not export the animation. Okay, so from here, we're just going to jump over to Unreal and there's our previous curtain that we made. It still looks pretty good, but now we're just going to import our other one. So curtain box test, open it. Now, as I said, the box was literally just uh, a testing phase first to see what it would look like. Uh, look like so. There we go. And it's still rotated, so I'm just going to hit spacebar and rotate it by 180 degrees. And then move this out. And then before I continue, I'm just going to uh, slap on this um, material that we used before, just so we can kind of like get the same look. And now I'm going to delete that curtain over there. I move this one in yeah, a little bit backwards. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much, but now you do have to take into account as well that we can always scale this on the many different axes. So I can take it on a Y axis and make it 0 0.5. But because I exported it with the box, which you don't necessarily need to do, um, it's going to look a little bit strange. But let's do it for now so that we can kind of like get the box um, on this floor piece over here so it doesn't overlap or get the curtain to overlap on anything else. And then there we go. So as you can see, it starts pretty much from over there and we'll do it like that. And it looks like it blends nicely with the floor and it still goes up all the way to where we want it to go. Uh, maybe a little bit lower, but we can fix that always. Um, it is a little bit low poly. Um, if you can recall the previous one, we actually added a subsurface modifier. So if I just rotate that, you can see it's much smoother than what that one is. It, it doesn't look bad. Uh, well, let's quickly check the difference in poly counts. See, this one is 1,035 triangles, 586 vertices. This one is 16,000. So that's quite a difference. And it's not that noticeable um, if you have to take into account. Well, once you apply the texture, yes more the material it is but uh, we could always just go back into blender and then just add a subsurface modifier uh, one or two levels two levels is what we used before and then you can see oh, that looks much better so it's pretty much it's up to you what you want to do uh, remember we can uh, as I said, you're not limited to what you want to do. If your curtain doesn't go all the way to where you want it to, do, uh, to go, we can always scale it. So we could go 1.10, no, 1.10, there we go. And then it kind of like gives you a little bit uh, of a different look, but um, then you're just gonna have to export this box separately and then position it exactly where you wanted it to be. So that's the end of this tutorial. It's a little bit more detail for the whole curtain making. Um, you can always just try different things. I mean, add different details here so that the curtain overlaps with it. Um, I didn't make a material for it because I did kind of cover material basics for everything. And we're just using like a solid material for this at the current moment. We could just like change the color. So I could go to, let, let's quickly do that. I'm going to, 
let's make a material instance of this one and I'm just going to move it into instances. So now we have one for the couch legs, it's, which is actually a metallic um, color in itself. So I'm just going to move that over and I just actually want to see, I didn't set any parameters. I think the only one that I did was color. Yeah. So now at least that we can change the color so we can make it something a little bit more on a light red tint and click save. And there we go. Now we have something completely different. So just create the basic material instance and then we could sort it out. This is not in any way what I mean um, by uh, I actually worked on it. We will cover a little bit more um, complex materials later on. But for now, uh, what you could always do is try and cop duplicate this, the same type of material that we made with the, the carpet to give it a bit more of a material look both material looks and then you can just uh, change the color of it but for this for what we wanted to do this looks pretty good i'm going to mess around with it a little bit more i'm going to add in my own colors maybe do a little bit of a cream color or something like that and then in the next video we're going to carry on and we're going to try something different because we're almost getting to the end of uh, what our level as you can see it's been shaping up and it looks pretty good and soon it's going to we're going to get to a point where we actually have to optimize our level because at this point we've just been adding detail and we haven't really been optimizing all right so with that said this is the end of this tutorial i hope you guys like what you saw if you did leave a like if you didn't you can leave a dislike please subscribe more content is on the way and i thank all of you very much for watching Bye bye